the Maine People Podcast. Available everywhere. Click subscribe so you never miss an episode. I first met Brendan Walsh when he was about to get on a bicycle and ride all the way down the East Coast. And we'll talk about that coming up. And we're also going to talk about, Brendan, how you're going to uh, you're going to run the entire coast of Maine. All that's coming up. But thank you for joining the Maine People Podcast. It's great to have you on. Uh, and I love your thank hat, you too. So Let's start. Show us that right away. Oh yeah, so this is the uh, this is a part of my uh, be good to each other project. So, you know, the concept all started when I was getting ready to uh, run the length of Cape Cod. You know, I needed a hat for you know my whole my whole garb there, and this has been a phrase I've been saying for a long time. And I wrote it on this hat. You know, didn't really think too too much into it past that. I was like, you know, this is the same color as my jersey, and then I noticed just like the reactions of people, you know, like out in the wild, like I'd be wearing the hat, I'd go up to approach a door and someone would notice the hat and they would hold the door open for an elderly woman who was walking by. Or just, you could tell someone was having a bad day and they just mm -hmm. caught a glimpse of the hat. And then instantly they're like, oh, how you doing buddy? You know, just like this complete turn of phrase. And I started to just pick up on this and I'm like, you know, not only is it changing the lives of people coming in direct contact of this, but, you know, you check yourself when you wear this too. How could I be, you know, how could I be a jerk if I'm wearing a hat that says be good to each other, you know? So just this has been like a really just a beacon of light for people. And I get, you know, folks all the time being like, that's such a great mantra for life. Mm -hmm. I hope you have it trademarked. If you can. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> in some way, in some way, in some way, you better do yeah. it. Uh, if you uh, if you want to find Brendan on Facebook and Instagram, it's Bicycle Brendan. Uh, you, you're definitely a, a story of a story of perseverance. Let's say because let's go let's go back to your. Okay, full disclosure. Before we recorded this uh, podcast, I asked Brendan. I need. Uh, to, I want to show everybody your certification, your Guinness certification of your Guinness World Record, and and you are so. Uh, so low key about it that you're like, yeah, I'm not sure where that is. I put it away somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's still in the envelope they gave me somewhere. I'll, I'll find it. I'll take a picture of it. <laughs> <laughs> so, but your Guinness world record all the way, here's a picture of you down at Key West. Uh, when you finally finished, you started in Madawaska and rode to Key West, but give us the whole, uh, give us the whole rundown of the reason why. And let's talk a little bit about your 10K for NAMI. Yeah, man. So, uh, you know, NAMI, first and foremost, is the National Alliance on Mental Illness. They're an amazing organization that has programs and groups for folks of all ages all across the country, you know. And I myself have uh, dealt with mental health issues, you know, my whole life. But, you know, this is really to honor my friends that I began losing to mental illness, you know, at the, you know, ripe right old age of 18 years old you know Man. i lost i lost three friends in the course of four years john you know uh <sighs> two to suicide and one to a drug overdose and this entire thing right here you know it was to honor them it was to not just raise money but you know raise awareness about all these important causes and really just kind of extend, you know, extend the idea of this hat to everybody, man. And just like, you know, the whole now becoming, you know, more well-spoken phrase, but the whole, you know, it's okay to not be okay. And that mm -hmm. was the whole reason behind this journey. But the journey almost didn't happen while you were training. It almost didn't happen. Oh, very, 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 very closely did not almost happen, man. Yeah, it was May 7th, 2019. Um, I was living in Waltham at the time. And what I would do every single morning, uh, I would be riding my bike 60 miles a day in prep for this. Um, you know, 30 before work, 30 after work, I'd be lifting on my lunch breaks. And I would always ride to Walden Pond somewhere. Like if you guys ever have a chance to please go there, it is the most beautiful, like tranquil place. There's so much magic there, but I would ride my bike every morning. I'm coming down, uh, the backside of the hill that leads into Waltham. I'm going like, you know, 25 miles per hour down this hill. And uh, another gentleman is going 25 miles per hour in the opposite direction and decides that he needs to turn right now. 
And this dude turned in front of me and he straight up hit me. Like I hit the front corner of his Audi and it was like a 50 mile per hour collision. My yeah. knee smashed through his side mirror. Like really all I remember of the collision part is just the sound of glass shattering. Oh. So 50 miles per hour, I get thrown up in the air, slam on the pavement. And, you know, right then I remember the dude coming up to me being like, oh, and I was like, dude, you have no idea, like the course of events, like I was on in the way you just changed it so much. And, yeah. you know, I had some people, John, after that, you know, cause the bike was pretzel, bro. Like bike totaled. No chance, like, but like RIP Gary Truman, thank you for being my first road bike ever. Um, but, you know, after that, I had a concussion. I tore my meniscus. I sprained my ankle. I mean, like, and I also had PTSD after that, too. You know, it was one of those things where I was afraid to go outside for a long time. And, you know, it took so much just to come out of that. And that was one month before I was originally supposed to. I had so many people being like, yo, man, you know, nice try. And I was like, this is just fuel for the fire, guys. Uh -huh. So I had to push until September of that same year. Well, everybody knows how that story ended. That's when you and I first talked when you had reached out and you, you were a guest on our morning show on WPOR. And, uh, and even with all those injuries, losing your bike, I don't know why it's called Gary Truman, but is there a story in that? Yeah, it's uh, he was just a, you remember GT mountain bikes? You know, they were like yeah. the BMX bikes. So they that was their first road bike, and it was GT. I was like, oh, Gary Truman, that sounds okay. residential. <laughs> Red, white, and blue. <laughs> okay. Um, so you being a being a being from from Massachusetts, and now you you and your wife are living in Maine. It's the old uh, adage, like you know, of a, a hardy New Englander. Does that suit you? Does that fit you? Is it like you that no one no one can stop you? Yeah, yeah, most definitely, man. Um, I'm a big you know, there's always a way, you know, to keep moving forward. And, you know, for me in a situation like the 10 K, and this is why I do everything to help other people, you know, is because there's a reason behind, it. you know, so when things get really hard, when they get really hard, cause it's mm -hmm. pretty inevitable on a 2,300 mile bike ride or whatever, you know, a hundred plus mile run, like things are going to get tough. And, in that time period, you know, you really got to have a good reason why you're doing something. You know, if it's for an accolade, if it's for money, you know, that's not really a good enough reason. But if it's to honor the ones you love and, you know, support folks who are suffering out there, like that's as good of a reason as I could ever come up with. Mm -hmm. And the awareness that you, that you made for, for NAMI, but you did it in 11 days, nine minutes and 30 seconds. But what was the total mileage from Madawaska to Key West? Yeah, it was just like a little bit under uh, 2,300 miles. Yeah. Man, that was unbelievable. But the Guinness World Record, fastest person to cross the U.S. from north to south by bicycle. That's all you now. And that'll probably forever be you because that's that's a big one. That's a big one to bite off. I can't imagine someone else wanting to try that. I see some other like, you know, cheapo versions of like, if you Google it or go to the Guinness Book uh, website, it's like fastest crossing of Florida by bicycle or, you know, smaller rides nothing quite that daunting yeah that was a that was a journey man and you know it was so wild in terms of you know this united states is a very large country you know and like especially when you're going by human powered travel and it was wild you know like when i was talking to you and this is why i couldn't stop you know and when i first met you man and when i was on the interviews was i was riding 200 to 220 miles a day yeah, you know, there's like, oh, we have a, I think we have, we have a video of, of you on the bike. We have a video of you on the, on the bike and the way you were talking to people and communicating. This might've been one of your Facebook lives or something, but I always found it remarkable that you were able to join us on the radio, uh, on a daily basis while you were, while you were crossing there, you were doing Facebook lives at, at some point you're like, you're, you're, you're on your bike like this. You're obviously, uh, uh on Facebook live, trying to read people's yeah. comments and respond to what people are saying. Like. How do you stay focused? Oh man, it's like, you know, when you're, you know, when you're doing that, like the thing here is like, it's such a, the ultra endurance, you know, field is so, so mental. Like this stuff is so mental. Like I remember, you know, during training rides, you know, you push harder, you know, you use, you know, more, more of your muscles and stuff like that. But 
you know, this is about like just keeping going and like keeping yourself metered. You know what I mean? And I, and I mean that yeah. in terms of like, you know, if you get too angry at a driver that almost hit you, then you burn out energy. You know what I mean? It's just about like, you don't have time for the extra stuff. You don't have time to be mad about nothing. You don't have time to be upset about trivial things. You know, it's all with that one goal in mind. And when you have things that, you know, support the goal, like community, man, like community is, is essential, not only in supporting a goal like this, but like, you know, supporting good people everywhere you go, you know, every single day. And, you know, with that, like when people follow along, it boosts my energy. It just makes me want to push harder, you know? And it's like, I just feel like I, in the most, and not people on my back, but people, you know, people pushing the wind at my uh-huh. back, man. Like people right. pushing me down, people pushing me forward, you know? And I get really motivated by that. Uh, here's the book cover for those who can't. Uh, the story of setting that Guinness world record. It's available at uh, many local area bookstores, including Sherman's. We, we give them a, a shout out. Um, but, uh, pick up this book. When are you going on an inspirational speaking book tour? Because there it is. I think you could do it. Yeah, man. I would, I would absolutely love to. I have some plans, uh, to get some stuff together after my next adventure. You know, that's, that's my goal with all this. You know, I like to think of myself as a person, you know, I go out on these long adventures. I experience these challenges, hard things along the way. And, you know, I try to soak that all up mm-hmm. and then, you know, digest it and be able to give it back to people as just, you know, life lessons, because that's really all this is, you know, is training for life, right? You know, life is unexpected. Life is wild and, and uncertain. And this is such a great way to kind of put things, you know, in perspective and realize like, you know, what is worth like putting your time into and, you know, just the every single day challenges we face and, you know, I have some big, big plans and big goals after that. Remind me of what John Lennon said. Life is what happens while you're busy making other plans. Yeah. No, kind of what you just said. <laughs> yeah, no, for real. It's like, you know, I try not to, you know, something with like the ride down the coast. I was pretty, you know, I was relatively itinerary, but even still, man, like I try to just let it be what it is, you know, and go out and, you know, there's another great quote from, you know, one of my adventure heroes, Sean Conway is, uh, you know, you can plan out the adventure aspect of an adventure, you know, mm-hmm. and then it just becomes this itinerary trip. And then, you know, where's, where's the, where's the great story going to happen in between those lines there? You gotta let the adventure happen, right? Uh, yeah. Brendan Walsh is, uh, is on the main people podcast, uh, pick up the book coming up in the next segment, how to climb a mountain on a bicycle, because he did that too. <laughs> and that's coming up. The way my dad brought me up was always to work hard Hi, and to treat people. Well, you ready to go for a ride? we try to keep our goal to make people feel comfortable buying their cars and feel comfortable with the people they're working with. Nice. Oh, it looks good over here. So become part of our family. We really mean that. Without question, we're in this together. We're gonna take care of you and treat you like your family anyways. This looks awesome. Yankee Ford has so many people willing to help and make this tough time a little bit easier. Radio207.com only plays original country music from Maine singers, songwriters, and bands. Streaming online and on your smart speaker. Radio207.com is on the air now. Radio207.com, only Maine, only country music. Your next online event can be perfect thanks to virtualproductionsgroup.com. The Mean People podcast couldn't happen without them, and they can make your remote streaming event absolutely technically perfect. High-quality live and pre-recorded productions for corporate events, weddings, tournaments, charities, and more with virtualproductionsgroup.com. Brendan, before we even get to what your next adventure is, one of your previous ones in very recent time, uh, starting where? In Katahdin and going all through the, what was the five or six biggest mountain peaks in New England with your bike? Yeah, man. So uh, this was called the NE6, the New England 6. I did it all to raise money for the Alzheimer's Association to honor uh, my Aunt Susan, who actually just passed away very recently from Alzheimer's. My condolences. 
Yeah, no, I appreciate my, uh, that. Uh, my mother-in-law also is uh, is an Alzheimer's uh, patient, and uh, we've been dealing with that for for years and years. So I, I know how your family feels, and I, I appreciate uh, the links you have, literally links and heights you have gone to to raise money for Alzheimer's. Well, I, I appreciate that, man. You know, it's it's just as it's just as much to honor her as it is to honor you guys who are the caregivers, man. It's it's tough, man. It's very tough. You know. So how did you do but, this yeah. between all six of these New England mountain peaks? Did you were did you bike and then bike up the mountain or bike and then climb the mountain? How much time did you uh, I think we may have a I think we have a picture of you at the top of one of the mountains with uh with the Alzheimer's flag too. There you are. Right there Perfect. at the start. Yes. Yeah. Yep. So it uh so the way I structured it, you know, like I was saying, I, I create these, I curate these challenges, you know, it's like where you know where art meets adventure, you know, art venture here. Uh so the trademark that too. Trademark that one too. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll write that one down. Um so basically it started at the base of Katahdin. So right when I started climbing, I started my watch and then it was like, all right, let's see how fast we could do it. So I hiked up the highest mountain in each state of New England. So Mount Katahdin, Mount Washington, Mount Mansfield, Mount Greylock, uh, Bear Mountain in Connecticut, and then little tiny Jeremoth Hill in, in Rhode Island. Uh, so it all started with, I ran up and down Katahdin, which I did in under four hours. And then I rode my bike wow. 225 miles uh, to Mount Washington, where then I just stashed my bike at the base, ran up and down Mount Washington. And then I just repeated doing that all the way until Jeremoth Hill in Rhode Island. And I did that in uh, a little under four and a half days, man. Yeah, 700 plus miles of bike riding, over over an Everest amount of, of hiking, you know, over wow. 29,000. Yeah. Are, are you the first? Is this a thing people do? No, I, I, I invented that challenge. I would love for other folks to try to take that on, see who can do it even faster, man. Like, because that's what it's all about right there, you know, uh, records are just a, a thing to be broken as everybody always says, you know, and mm -hmm. I want to be able to give back something that has given me so much in terms of the ultra endurance community. Like that. I just look at this as a, a gift to other people to hopefully be able to take on and like do it even bigger themselves. I know you have a sponsor uh, on your shirt that you wore conveniently on the podcast. How much does nutrition yeah. play into being able to do all of this? Oh, it's essential. It, it really, really, really is. And that was such a huge turning point in my life, John. After uh, after my first bike ride across the country in 2017 uh, for St. Jude's Children's Hospital, which is in honor of my grandmother, uh, you know, I did that. And, you know, it only took like three or four days, John, for me to be like, I am in way over my head and then never gave up and finished. And it was, it changed the rest of my life. I was like, oh, well, what? you know, what can't I do? You know, it was like, oh, I could, let me try to do that. Let me try to do that. And, you know, it coincided uh, with, you know, fixing my diet, fixing my lifestyle mm. at the time, which was like, you know, which was not very conducive, healthy behavior at all. You know, it was a whole bunch of partying, like every single night. And then it was, you know, I found something else uh, to channel all of my, you know, boundless energy towards. And then I found, you know, the world of veganism. And I learned so much about how I can recover so much faster, you know, everything's so much more nutritionally dense. And, you know, karmically, I'm, you know, I'm not doing any harm to anybody else. And, you know, that's a really, really important thing to me, whether it's, whether it's a, a chicken, a pig, a cat, a dog, or a person, man, like, I think we all deserve love and respect. Mm -hmm. Back to what your hat says, right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah show, show it one more time as a reminder. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There, there you go. Yeah. That the, the be good to each other, you know, mantra applies in, in, you know, many different facets. And that's why for me, like veganism is, you know, it's, it's like the positive support, you know, it's like when you do the right thing and you do it for the right reasons and you don't just do it to be like, Hey, I made this, you know, Facebook video of me saving this animal in a sewer grate, which is amazing. Save more animals and sewer grate to people. But like, you know, <laughs> right. do it for the sake of doing it, you know? You know, and that's what it's all about. Do you uh do you sell the hats as a fundraiser for your your projects, for your adventures? Yeah, no, so do you, I do, do you uh, make do you make them? I make every single one, my friend. Yeah. 
Yeah. So I make all the hats and what I do is I sell six different colors and each one has a corresponding charity that uh, a portion of the profits goes to. So the black one goes to this company called Outdoor Afro. Uh, They're a company that, well, actually they're a nonprofit. All these are different nonprofits that help, uh, you know, different communities uh, of color be able to have access to the outdoors and like Mm -hmm. teaching, you know, go on river rafting trips and hikes and they'll organize all that sort of stuff. And then I have a blue one that goes to NAMI, for example, and a red one that goes to St. Jude's Children's Hospital. So through that, through selling the hats, through selling the, you know, the tie dye, be good to each other t-shirts, you know, I try to, you know, use that to help fund my adventures, you know, as I'm, you know, self-supported athlete. But even with that, you know, I still donate 10% of every single thing to a charity at the same time. Pretty admirable. Uh, let's talk about your next adventure in the next segment because your next one is uh, is pretty exciting. Again, something I've never heard anyone do before, and it's so very main. It, you couldn't be yeah. more main than this one. Uh, that's coming up in the next segment. The way my dad brought me up was always to work hard and to treat people well. We try to keep our goal to make people feel comfortable buying their cars and feel comfortable with the people they're working with. Nice. Oh, it looks good over here. So become part of our family. We really mean that. Without question, we're in this together. We're going to take care of you and treat you like your family anyways. This looks awesome. Yankee Ford has so many people willing to help and make this tough time a little bit easier. Radio207.com only plays original country music from main singers, songwriters, and bands. Streaming online and on your smart speaker. Radio207.com is on the air now. Radio207.com. Only main, only country music. Your next online event can be perfect thanks to virtualproductionsgroup.com. The Main People podcast couldn't happen without them, and they can make your remote streaming event absolutely technically perfect. High-quality live and pre-recorded productions for corporate events, weddings, tournaments, charities, and more with virtualproductionsgroup.com. Brendan Walsh on the Main People podcast. You're an adventure consultant. This is a business. What does that entail? What do you do? Do you... you curate these adventures like you do for other people based on what they're able to do physically man i try to you know i try to be you know the coach the consultant the you know the cheerleader because it's like i want them to live their dream you know what i mean like john you have your dreams i want john to live his dreams i want you know all of my good friends to live their wild adventures you know and that was me when i rode across the country the first time you know, I brought a guitar, I brought a French press, I brought like, I mailed home like 40 pounds of gear, John. Things I did, <laughs> I learned the hard way. I learned the hardest way possible. So with this, you know, I'm trying to help other folks who want to do good things for a good reason, make their dreams come true and be able to not only become a better version of themselves, but be able to help you know, people that they care about through all these things. So with that, you know, I help people do 100 mile runs, organize, you know, through hikes, rides across the country, all sorts of, you know, things doing exactly what I love. I want to help people get a glimpse into all of the beauty that is ultra endurance and just like moving your body outside. And you've made the mistakes no need for someone else to make the same mistakes you did. You've already learned, no, it shouldn't be this way. It should be this way. Yeah. And, you know, I, I have people to thank, you know, myself when I'm like, hey, you know, one of the friends I made riding across the country, Paul Schlegel, great ultra runner. I didn't even hear about this stuff. I was like, people run further than a marathon and then what? And he was like, yeah, I've run 200 miles. So I'm like, Paul, give me some answers, bro, before I ran across Cape Cod for the second part of the NAMI fundraiser. <laughs> And like, I, I believe that's how, you know, I believe that's what we're supposed to do. You know what I mean? Like somebody else comes through and they're like, I want to do this epic thing. And I'm like, let's, let's make that happen. You know? Does that Forrest Gump scene ever pop into your head where he's just I, uh, running and running? I, I just felt like running, John. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, All right, let's take a look at the map of what your next adventure is going to be, because uh, I want to hear all about this plan. You're running the entire length of Maine, the whole seacoast. And by the way, if if you're running the seacoast of Maine, I know with with all the little trivia bit here, 
Uh, Maine has the longest seacoast of any state just when you go in and out with all the nooks and crannies. You're not running the nooks yeah. and crannies, but you are running all that. This is the walking time that I uh, that I checked on Google Maps. If you walked it from where you're starting um, in Lubeck all the way to where? Kittery? To Fort Foster? Yeah. It would, you walked yeah. it, it would be three days and 21 hours, as you can see. That's a long <laughs> way. That's a long run, my friend. Yeah, 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 yeah. So with that, uh, you know, I call this the Rocky Coast Run. And the goal with this is to raise money for the National MS Society, you know, a, an awful, you know, disease that not only, you know, is such a psychological thing for folks who get it, you know, um, but obviously a physical thing. And then something that's really hard for their loved ones, you know, um, it's a, it's, you know, I had to do something about this pretty much. So the Rocky Coast run is, you know, 300 miles, like you said, from uh, Lubeck all the way down to Kittery. And what I'll be doing is I'm actually going to be uh, pushing all of my own gear. So like a tent, uh, a stove, you know, all <laughs> my clothes, everything. And uh, of course, my good friend, Venture Mascot, Mr. Crabman here, um, all of that Wait. 300 miles. Don't put that away. We're going to come back to that. Finish after yeah. you finish the story. <laughs> uh, so 300 miles pushing all my own gear uh, in like a running stroller. So like a baby wow. stroller filled with, with all my own stuff. Wow. So that's the X. How much will that weigh? 50 pounds? Uh, hopefully not. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's a lot. Yeah. All right. I don't, I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> hopefully not. No, man. It's, uh, you know, it's been... For me, the reason why I took this on is because I am particularly not as good at this. You know, like I'm typically like, I'm going to run a hundred miles and I'm going to just like go for it. Like mm -hmm. for me, it's, I haven't always been able to run big, long periods of time volume, you know, like miles after miles. It's like one day, you know, one day anybody can do anything. Cause it's over at the end of the day. Right. But for this, this is a, you know, particularly more challenging event for someone like myself. And that's exactly why I'm doing it, you know, and having the stroller filled with all that weight filled with all my own gear is supposed to, you know, like serve as the metaphor that with that, you know, folks living with the MS go through with yeah. the caretakers go every single day. You don't have a cat, do you? That might accidentally stow away. Cats like places like that. <laughs> You better Whenever be careful. Leave, they'll, they'll, if I don't close it, John, like I, I pop over and they're just sleeping inside. And I'm like, you don't yeah. want to go for a <laughs> <laughs> All right. Show me that mascot again. Uh, as, as oh, it yeah. all, does it go with you everywhere? Every single, every single adventure, John. Like he was front and center on my handlebars uh, on the 10K. He goes in my, he's in my pocket when I run up and down mountains. He's, he's wow. you know, the living embodiment of uh, the crab bucket theory. You know, I don't know if you've okay. ever heard that, but so if you have a bucket of crabs, instead of forming a big crab ladder and they all climb out and they're like, oh, we figured this out. What they'll do is if they see another crab coming out, they'll try to rip them down because they don't want that crab to get out because they want to get out. But Mr. Crab Man, he's a good crab. We all want to get out of the bucket together, man. And that's the entire goal. And that's why Mr. Crab Man has always been uh, the number one supporter out on the road, dude. Uh, I like it. What would your, uh, what would your advice be for someone who says I can't for anything? Cause I feel like you've got some advice in there. Oh man. Uh, any single time I've ever thought, how could I do this? I'm like, I literally don't know. How I could go one more step. Something always, 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 always has thrown itself right in my face, loud, clear, bold, underlined letters to just say, yes, you can. I'm at the foot of Mount Mansfield. I had gotten heat stroke the day before. I have already ridden my, it's already like this day too, in addition to it, was like 97 degrees, no tree cover. I'm getting ready to cut, to climb up Mount Greylock and there's a crazy, you know, the super intense thunderstorms we get in the summer. Mm -hmm. One of those I hate them. just, dude, bearing down on Greylock. Like you can see it out in the distance. Mm -hmm. I'm like, how am I supposed to climb up this mountain? I can hardly ride my bike right now. And I pick my head up 
And my childhood friend, Ian, is like, let's go climb that mountain, buddy. And in that moment, I had all my energy back again. My pain went away. Everything went away in that exact moment. I'm like, cool, let's go. It was just, you know, it's the second wind. You always have mm-hmm. 34, 54, 117th wind, man. And like, whenever you think you can't is exactly when you're on the precipice of a breakthrough. And that's exactly when you can. And you prove to yourself that you can do anything in those moments, man. Yep. And sometimes that be good to each other comes into play when you might be the person who gives that person who wants to quit just that little extra nudge to keep going. Oh, yeah, man. It's, you never know. You never know how strong you are, man, until, until you're put in that position, you know? And I think that's a beautiful opportunity that many people don't get to experience in their lives is finding where they think the end of their ability is just like where they can't give any more. And then they just do it anyways. And they blow themselves away. They blow everybody out of the water. They're like, I can't believe, you know, I thought he was done. You know, I thought he was just, I thought he was about to just collapse right there. And then all of a sudden, 34th win, John, you know, Uh coming out of nowhere, you know, is you, you just always got more to give. And that's, you know, and that's such a great metaphor for life. You know, we're going to get knocked down. We're going to lose the people that we love, but you know, the reason why we persevere, the reason why we continue is for those that we love. You know what I mean? It's mm-hmm. to honor ourselves. It's, it, it's for, for you, John, you know, I do it for you, buddy. And, and the great uh, morning show team and, you know, everybody else just to see that, you know, when you think you're finished is just when you're starting. Get knocked down 10 times, stand up 11. That's what my sensei said. Yeah, absolutely. Word, good words of advice. Uh, Brendan Walsh, the adventurer on the Main People Podcast. I appreciate the time. I can't wait to follow your next adventure. Thanks so much. Thank you so much, Sean. You're the man, dude. There aren't many Mainers that have written 29 New York Times bestsellers. Douglas Preston has, and he's coming up on the Main People Podcast.